the records. And uh, so basically, um, we're going to start with the first point of, of the meeting, which is the um, uh, which is the the updates of, of the situation. Uh, and the first update uh, to the new development of the Klimsa station is the integration of some charts from ECMWF. And I will let uh, my colleague Vijay to introduce you about uh, uh, how, how we can proceed through the, the Klimsa station. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, Vijay, you can share your screen or introduce. Now let's maybe give the quick update of uh, the all all the all the status. Uh, currently, we we are planning uh, to update in the Klimza station. So the first is um, the ECMWF charts. So for the people who are already using the ECMWF, chart, ECMWF charts from the ECMWF website. Now we will have the possibility to use uh, most of the charts in the, in the Klimza station directly from the Jupyter notebook. Uh, since it's a more detailed uh, uh, things, so if you are interested to use uh, any of these charts, mostly the seasonal forecast, uh, uh, the extended forecasts, all these charts are made available in the Flimsa station. So, uh, but we are not going to uh, detail in this uh, meeting. But if you are interested in any of these charts, we let you to um, write us and then we can prepare the specific charts for you. So, yeah, exactly uh, the ECMWF charts, what uh, Christoph is presenting. So, this is about the, the ECMWF charts. Uh, you want to say more, Christoph? So, right, yeah, it's so. it, this is the this is from the the free version. So you are you can if you look at the address, it's charts.ecmwf.int, and then you have uh, you have a, a large number or and various products that are available derived from either reanalysis or uh, forecast, mostly forecast, in, in, in fact. And all these products are freely available. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, as you can see, all the maps are showing Europe by default, but of course you can choose the region you are of your interest. And uh, it covers, it's, it's a global product. And then you have a, a very large number of variables. So basically, if you already use such kind of product, it it could be it could be done. Uh, operate. We can integrate it into the Klimsa station. So basically, the idea is to copy just the image, not the data sets, because some of them are, are computed uh, in house at the ECMWF and not shared necessarily, but just the image. And uh, all these products, so basically all these variables are, can be integrated. So it's it's very it covers a very large number of of informations from uh, the very simple uh, forecast to uh, more ensemble uh, more ensemble uh, informations, even multimodal ensembles. So it's it's a very huge amount of data sets. Uh, and uh, basically, what uh, what your uh, VJ said is that we have the techno. I mean, we we can in implement these images into the Klimsa station. So if you want to have this kind of uh, quick view of the of the situation, it can it can be linked to a seasonal forecast, to the tropical cyclones, to uh, multimodal ensemble forecast. Etc. Something that is not also the indicators about the ENSO or such kind of things. Um, I mean, if you have, if you want to have these quick chats, the charts into the Klimsa station, don't hesitate to look at. If you don't know this uh, product, don't hesitate to go to this address charts.ecmwf.int uh, to to see the 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 product you can you can be interested and don't hesitate to contact us uh, for having uh, more information and uh, or for having such a product integrated into the Klimsa station over to you vj okay thanks gustav and uh, on other updates on the impact toolbox is that we have uh, uh, the Rusle model framework uh, for uh, assessing the soil erosion. So that is integrated in the impact tool of the Klimsa station. 
and also the consolidation of forest emission reporting tool, which is finalized. And the Dario is uh, available also in this meeting. Later on, if you have some doubts, uh, we can address all these uh, things. And also the integration of high resolution planet, planet image visualization tool that is also integrated in the impact, uh, impact toolbox. So these are the, the updated updates, uh, which is going to be available in the 1.2 version of the Kunsa station, along with this, uh, the station observation element, which uh, Udian is going to present today, uh, along with ingestion of the, the station data in the Kunsa station, and then the visualization. So this is a very quick uh, update of uh, the Kunsa station for the newer version. So. I give back the floor to Christoph. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. Uh, if it's, uh, e is there any question regarding the, the first, uh, this first news? If not, uh, we can go ahead. I don't know if Marco, you want to add uh, something for the news? Of the team um, no, Christoph, thanks. Is, uh, okay. I think it's okay. The key messages has been presented. Okay, thank you. So we can start the second part of the of, of this meeting is to to discuss about the new integration of the of the station data set into the the CS. So I will give the floor to Jorian to to make this uh, presentation and uh, the demo. Jorian. Hi everybody. Okay, uh, so I will share my screen. Okay. Okay. So, um, I um, first start uh, with um, with um, the the new functionality within the use interface uh, uh, within the analysis tool. Um, for uh, working with the station data that you um, um, now can also uh, import uh, within uh, the climate station. Um, for this import, I will later explain that you can do that within a, a Jupyter Notebook. We have some uh, functionality uh, uh, added uh, to the system where you can... Um, uh, import um, your um, station data coming from um, uh, currently only uh, the software Klimsoft. And we are also busy in uh, writing um, a functionality for uh, other software like uh, Clysis or Clyde. And so I want to start uh, first of all uh, with uh, the user interface. Um, as you can see here, um, I have a, a map open where you now can um, show or hide um, station data. So there is this, uh, this button, uh, new button here. So if you click it again, um, you will see uh, that the station, uh, uh, the station's locations uh, will be uh, visualized as point data. Um, you can then um, go over one of the stations to see um, the station, some station information uh, if, uh, if available. Um, and um, you see um, in the um, time series, uh, so in the new, when you click here on the new graph uh, under the profile, um, you see um, actually two new uh, uh, sections uh, added. So if I don't show the station data, these sections are gone. And if you show the station data within a map, then uh, these sections appear. Um, first section is uh, the selected weather stations. You can select weather stations uh, within the map where you show the weather, uh, weather stations uh, locations by clicking, for example, on uh, on an area uh, of uh, of a layer uh, that you have added uh, uh, from uh, from the menu here. Uh, in this case, it is uh, the African layer. Um, I um, I select here 
uh, Ethiopia. Um, there are 20 stations there. Uh, you can also select more stations if you want by holding the control button and uh, uh, click or um, select some other stations. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is actually um, it concerning uh, the selection. You can also, of course, select uh, smaller areas. So if I now um, activate uh, the Africa, Africa Level 1, you can also, of course, select smaller regions um, or even uh, uh, draw um, a region like this to select, then you have to first, uh, sorry, you have to save the layer like this <clears throat> to be able to select it. Then you select it and all the stations within that area are then also selected. Um, um, then we go to this side. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, deselect for a second uh, this one. And I'm gonna show you this area for which we have data in the, uh, in the station. Um, so here I have selected uh, 20 weather stations and you see below here um, the observation types that are available for these stations uh, um, over which you can then generate uh, these kinds of graphs. Um, so I can, for example, regenerate uh, this graph uh, by taking only the precipitation. You have to check also the include weather station data for to um, uh, generate um, um, the time series uh, graph uh, over um, over the observation types, and of course you have to select um, a time frame. I'm going to select 2002, um, and then you can generate the time series over these 20 stations like this, and that is the same as this one. You can also combine um, the station data with uh, with products. So, for example, I can select here um, a FuseNet. Sorry, I go a bit too fast. A ten day. Um, as you can see here, um, the precipitation is daily, and um, I've selected the product that is a 10 day product. Um, if I generate um, the time series with this combination, then the weather station data is aggregated um, according to um, the selected, um, the time frequency of the selected uh, product. Uh, can also be monthly or yearly, um, depends on the product that you select. So you select a year. And uh, now you have the, both products available and uh, the station daily station data aggregated uh, in, in 10 days. Um, I can show this, uh, for example, also for the temperature. So I created uh, here two examples. So the temperature, <clears throat> um, I deselect the product. So you can just select the weather station data and no product and generate the time series over this. Um, or add the product. Um, so I'm gonna pick temperature monitoring. I think it was this one. So hourly. Well, 
Okay, we uh, take the monkey. And here you have where also, so I selected the monthly um, product uh, of um, era five monthly uh, 2MT. And the daily temperature min and the daily max uh, of the station data is then uh, aggregated um, to uh, one month. Okay, I think that is it. Um, I think it is um, for you a very interesting uh, new functionality to, to view your station data. Uh, of course, uh, now it is very important that you uh, are also able um, to um, to import uh, your station data into the climate station. Um, so currently, um, um, Jurian. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Jurian, uh, for this presentation. Um, there was a request to do a bit yeah, of translation French. in French. I so maybe we, we some... stop here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can. I can do. Uh, I mean, Jurian, what you can do is to you restart slowly some. Um, some okay. Um, okay. Will... And I yeah. will just. Uh, I will try to. Uh, to. Okay. Uh, I will try to. Uh, Shall to I restart it. all over? Or um... yeah, yeah. You start. Uh, okay, you you start like that, and uh, and then you the different steps, and uh, just I will do relatively quickly. I will do this the 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 comments in France, in French. Okay. 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 okay donc pour les francophones. Alors là, ça enregistre. Hein, ça enregistre. Euh, J'ai bien la, la fonction enregistrement qui est en cours. Donc voilà la carte de, des données qui sont, vous euh, voyez les points bleus, ce sont les observations. Euh, et, euh, et donc il y a ce, 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 ce bouton qui permet d'afficher ou de, de, de cacher les stations que vous avez euh, téléchargées dans votre système. Donc là, euh, voilà, là, elles réapparaissent. Et ensuite, vous pouvez soit individuellement sélectionner une station pour voir un peu les caractéristiques. Euh, voilà. Et vous voyez la localisation, les caractéristiques de la station, euh, les coordonnées, euh, etc. Et les paramètres qui sont enregistrés. OK. Vous pouvez aussi, euh, euh, si cela euh, vous intéresse, sélectionner un ensemble de points. Euh, donc là, par exemple, si on sélectionne soit par une région ou un pays euh, pour avoir les points qu'on veut, on veut prendre en compte, et lorsqu'on effectue cette sélection, on a à droite, vous avez les 20, euh, c'est le nombre de stations qui ont été sélectionnées. Euh, dans cette, donc dans ce, pour ce pays, on a, une, on a 20 stations là qui sont à, à, disponibles. Ça peut être aussi des régions, ça peut être, être d'autres types de, de sélections. Là, là c'est par, par pays, c'est pour ça. OK On peut, le, on, peut ajouter, on peut ajouter, évidemment, dans, dans la sélection, on peut ajouter les stations qui sont en dehors de, de, de la sélection. Ou alors, on peut les définir en définissant un polygone. Donc là, on va, dé, on, on va dessiner un polygone euh, de région d'intérêt qui n'est pas nécessairement une région euh, politique, euh, mais une région d'études d'intérêt particulier, spécifique, scientifique. Voilà. Et une fois qu'on a euh, défini ce, ce polygone, euh, on, peut le sauver, euh, on peut le sauvegarder en disant que c'est notre région d'étude de, de près d'intérêt. De, et lorsqu'on va la sélectionner, et bien automatiquement, on va sélectionner toutes les stations qui sont à l'intérieur de ce polygone d'intérêt. De, de, euh, et donc là, on voit qu'on a 40, euh, 40 stations dans le polygone. OK. À partir de là, euh, on va pouvoir faire une, une succession de, 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 de manipulations des, des données, comme on peut faire euh, lorsqu'on a les données gridées. Donc, euh, on va pouvoir, par exemple, les afficher, euh, de, de faire des graphiques, euh, des, des évolutions temporelles notamment, 
euh, avec les observations. Donc voilà, on a le menu, euh, on a les menus des 20 stations parce qu'on a sélectionné le pays avec 20 stations. Ensuite, on, on, on met les stations, euh, voilà, on sélectionne les stations euh, d'observation et la variable qu que l'on souhaite. Donc là, il a, il a sélectionné les daily precipitation, les précipitations journalières. On va sélectionner une année, une période d'étude qui, qui est, est d'intérêt. Voilà, donc là, il a sélectionné 2017 et il va demander, la, il va calculer la, la série temporelle. Euh, <rire> donc là, there is a only few data set. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de données disponibles donc, euh, pour cette année-là. Euh, donc, on va prendre une autre année où il y a un peu plus de, de produits. Voilà. Et donc, on a une série temporelle de produits. Euh, de, de précipitations journalières qui sont issues, euh, qui est la moyenne des, euh, des, des stations sélectionnées. Et donc, on a accès aux valeurs euh, directes euh, qui sont des, des, des données, euh, qui sont une, euh, une, la, la sélection, euh, qui sont les, les produits issus de la sélection des, des stations données. OK Et on peut faire la même chose avec... Euh, on peut faire la chose avec d'autres variables et surtout, on peut intercomparer avec d'autres produits qui sont disponibles. Euh, comme vous le savez, on a des produits, euh, on a des produits de, de, à 10 jours, par exemple, euh, de, issus d'autres catalogues comme Chirps. Et on va pouvoir, on peut très bien intercomparer ces données-là avec les données Chirps ou avec d'autres données qu'on a de la Climsa Station. OK. Donc, évidemment, il faut prendre la même période d'étude. Et on va pouvoir regarder, euh, on va pouvoir comparer euh, les données euh, issues de Chirps avec les données des, 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 des données euh, précipes. Uh, just, just to confirm that uh, when you say it's precipitation daily, it's, it's recombined for 10 days, right? Yes. OK. So, donc là, c'est indiqué précipitation journalière, mais en fait, c'est les précipitations à 10 jours. Euh, sur le même pas de temps que euh, les données Chirps. Donc, de la varia... c est, c est, ce sont des intercomparais... intercomparaisons possibles directes euh, et qui peuvent être très pertinentes pour, euh, si vous voulez, travailler sur l'incertitude des produits que vous utilisez. Euh, petite chose à savoir quand même, c'est que attention à la distribution de vos stations lorsqu'elles sont plus ou moins bien réparties euh, de manière homogène dans la sélection du pays. Euh, car vous pouvez avoir un petit biais euh, lorsque on est dans des pays où il y a une grande variabilité spatiale et une distribution non homogène des stations. Voilà. Et I think it's not necessary. I mean, okay, I can I can just say that uh, we we're gonna do the same with temperature, but we don't have to go. I think it... donc on, on peut faire la même chose avec la température, mais euh, bon, c'est le même principe c'est que les, les, la plupart des, 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 des stations qu'on a sont aussi, euh, ont à la fois les données précipes et les données température disponibles. Et donc, on peut faire exactement ce même travail d'intercomparaison des produits euh, et quelque part de validation euh, en utilisant euh, en, à partir des variables de température. Donc là, voilà la, la, les données température max et min euh, dérivées des stations de mesure euh, qui nous permettent d'avoir les valeurs exactes à partir des stations sélectionnées. OK, I think it's fine. If there is uh, any question, s'il y a une question, uh, s'il y a des questions, des remarques, if you have any questions, suggestions, don't hesitate. And, um, did, did, did you finish or? Yes. I think OK, so. OK, yeah. So we open for questions. Donc, on est ouvert aux questions. Le, le, la présentation est... La démonstration est, est, est finie. Est-ce que vous avez des questions, des remarques sur l'utilisation de ces données-là, sur l'utilisation, l'implémentation Don't be shy. If you have any questions, raise your hand or just uh, open your mic. Yes, Romeo. Yeah, yes, please. Morning, all. Uh, thank you for the the good presentation, the progress. Um, I can notice that the large part of Africa that we don't see the stations. Um, how is that? 
Yes, indeed. Um, so we have been uh, exchanging with. Uh, uh, yeah. I can hear some background noise, or maybe some mic is open. But Romeo, your, your question is very pertinent. But I say that uh, you see now uh, stations and uh, measurements uh, for the Eastern Africa. Cause, uh, and also Southern Africa, because we received uh, from uh, uh, ICPAC, uh, from Namibia, some uh, sample data sets. But uh, with respect to the other um, observations, uh, especially the remote sense, the, the seasonal forecast, uh, we don't populate the station with this data ourselves. It's really up to the regional centers to, to import their own station data. And also it's true that sometimes uh, we, we received only mainly just small samples of observation, as you can see, just a few years in this case, uh, to 2002, because uh, there are also limitations in how the regional center can distribute also with us uh, the, um, the observation coming from the country. Um, so that's, that's the reason. What, what you see here is uh, just an example just some sample data sets we are using to, to implement uh, the, the feature and test them. But uh, also as a general principle, uh, um, and there, there is a big difference with the, the rest of the data sets we pull uh, from the data providers like Copernicus, uh, C3S and so on, is uh, really up to the, the user, the regional center to upload uh, their measurements. Uh, and uh, as Jurian is going to show, you, you had to upload uh, from uh, Climsoft or Clyde or another DBMS uh, the station locations and the observation themselves. So um, that is going to be the, um, the second part of our presentation on how you can do this upload. But the, really the idea is that uh, once you de we deploy this new version with uh, these additional functionalities, uh, you populate. Uh, the database uh, with your own observations. That, does it answer, uh, Romeo, your question? Yes, thank you. Any other um, remark or comment um, on what we put in in French that the question is that it concerned the distribution of stations? L'objectif étant de ne pas vous proposer euh, tout le catalogue, des, enfin, de ne pas intégrer nous-mêmes les données d'observation, on ne les a pas forcément. Euh, C'est juste des partenariats avec des instituts euh, actuels qui nous ont permis d'avoir accès à ces données de station, mais vous, êtes, vous pouvez vous-même intégrer, euh, Marco, euh, corrige-moi si, si, si c'est correct, euh, chacun peut gérer ses propres stations et chacun peut intégrer ses propres stations dans la, dans la Climsa Station. Euh, l'idée n'est pas de les partager avec tout le monde et l'idée n'est pas de nous envoyer les données. L'idée, c'est que vous puissiez aussi les gérer vous-même de votre côté. Oui, exactement. Il y a vraiment une grosse différence entre les données gridées, les données qui en prend par les euh, data providers, les, les fournisseurs de données comme uh, Copernicus ou, ou des autres, qui sont disponibles pour tout le monde. Normalement, les données stations sont gérées par les institutions nationales ou régionales. Ils ne passent pas à travers le GRC. Nous, franchement, on n'a même pas accès à ces données-là. Et c'est vraiment les usagers euh, au niveau régional, par exemple, s'ils ont la possibilité de consolider les, les observations qui sont acquis au niveau national, de... Euh, télécharger dans le système les données directement, comme Yuri en va montrer dans la seconde partie de la, de la présentation, où on va un peu sur le nouveau technique de comment, on ne rentrera pas trop le détail technique, mais de toute façon, montrer le principe d'exporter de les données de Climsoft, par exemple, et de les importer dans la Climsa Station. Euh, là, sera, il y aura de la documentation, des guidelines, peut-être aussi des vidéos pour ça. On va vous, vous montrer maintenant un peu quelle est euh, la, la méthode, la méthodologie pour le faire. Mais avant de passer à ça, s'il y a des autres questions, des observations, des remarques sur ce que vous trouvez intéressant, si vous pensez que ça peut être utile pour votre utilisation de la station, des suggestions 
So if there is any other remark, a question uh, um, about uh, if you think it interesting, you think you are going to use it, what you see missing, uh, what you would like to have more, indeed we have a time to, to discuss a bit again on that. No comments, pas de commentaires, pas de questions. No questions. Okay, so we can continue. Okay. Um, so, um, actually, now the most important part, uh, uh, that is uh, how do you get um, your station data uh, into the climate station? Um, so, we've implemented some functionality to, functionality to import data that is exported from uh, the Klimsoft um, uh, software. <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> actually uh, mostly used. Um, um, so that is uh, currently the only functionality, the import fun functionality that uh, that we have integrated, and we are working um, um, uh, together um, uh, already uh, with um, uh, some um, um, regional centers uh, to do it for Clyde and um, uh, and also the others um so um what does that mean um to ingest um your station data into the system you must uh, first of all be able to uh, um, export uh, it from uh, your system in this case it is uh, klimsoft um, the necessary data uh, or tables actually um, to uh, export them in uh, comma delimited uh, files. Um, these uh, these files uh, actually um, can be exported directly from uh, uh, Klimsoft, uh, but it is a full dump of the whole. Um, the complete uh, database, and that is not necessary. Um, so um, Samuel, I don't remember exactly his uh, surname, uh, from ICPAC, uh, who is actually a developer of uh, the Klimsoft uh, software, is going to implement within Klimsoft uh, some new um, export functionality where you can um, actually filter um, your specifically uh, your observation final um, data um, and to export it in uh, in the common delimited file <clears throat> as requested um, for the for the climate station so I have actually um, uh, only some examples um, um, from um, uh, Klimsoft uh, software. Uh, one is uh, from uh, Namibia, and uh, the other from uh, from ICPAC. Um, in this example, I'm going to show you um, the data from uh, Namibia. So how the import is done. Um, there is also a sequence that you have to follow um, to to import uh, your data. So. Uh, first of all, you have to import your station data um, because uh, your observation final data uh, is um, actually the stations uh, mentioned in the observation final. They have to exist in, uh, in the stations table, of course. So first you import your station, uh, uh, your stations. Uh, you don't have to do that every time, of course, um, uh, but only if you have uh, new stations uh, um, within uh, uh, your uh, uh, region. Um, 
And then uh, after the, you have um, um, imported the stations, uh, you um, import the observations. Uh, the observation elements, um, actually they, um, you don't need them to import uh, every time. Um, and I, actually, you, I don't think you, that you need them uh, need to import them uh, very often. It is only when that when you within the Climsoft software make changes uh, uh, to this uh, uh, to this table to observation elements, and then uh, specifically to the element scale, um, or if you maybe add elements through the software, uh, then you need to um, to update uh, also this table. Um, which is also uh, exportable, um, filtered um, from the Climsoft software once uh, Samuel has uh, implemented it and uh, will distribute uh, this this new version of uh, the Climsoft software. So I'm gonna just uh, run the example. Um, here, what I do is just reading um, the, the CSV file. And you see what is inside, so you can check it. Um, the following is uh, reading the ops element table, which you can also check its outcome. And uh, the following is the observation final, um, comma delimited file, its contents, which you then can also uh, check its contents. Then uh, we go to the import uh, uh, functionality uh, uh, itself. Um, so there is now one uh, import function um, that you uh, just run. And uh, um, so I can do that, for example. Here it is um, importing uh, the station data. And that uh, might uh, take a while, this station data. And okay, it is done. And as an, uh, as an, uh, an output, it gives um, how many stations are inserted, how many are updated, uh, and um, if there are any errors. <clears throat> um, the same thing is for ops element. Um, there is also uh, one function available to uh, to import um, the ops element uh, comma the limited file, and um, it has a similar output: <clears throat> how many are inserted and how many are updated, and if there are any errors. And finally, uh, also the observation final uh, data. Um, you get um, also the same. Um, same message here there is some extra information because maybe there is uh, some observation final information about stations that are not present in the station table so then you can see um, immediately if you have to import uh, some new stations into the system and rerun then the import of the observation, observation final to have also the data of those stations. Um, okay, I think um, that is about it. You can, there's another uh, possibility. You can also, um uh, give here um uh, a false which means um that um any existing observations within the climate station are uh, not overwritten so by default uh any existing records um they are updated uh, but if you don't want that, then you can indicate that uh, by this um, this flag. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, so for now, um, it is only for uh, exports that are uh, coming from the Klimsoft uh, software. 
um, and uh, in in the near future we will also have uh, functions um, ready uh, for to do the same uh, from data that is coming from other software um, or data that is coming directly from um, the automatic weather, weather stations. Okay, I think that is it, uh, Christoph. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jurien. Uh, maybe Marco, could you try to recap? Or yes, for um, disons la partie pour la version française de la présentation. Alors là, il s'agit d'importer les données d'observation, disons, qui viennent des stations sur le terrain dans le système. Comme vous savez, il y a des différents outils pour, pour le faire. Nous, on a commencé à regarder Climsoft, qui, on, on pense, utiliser, on est sûr, on sait qu'il est utilisé dans un ICPAC et je pense un ACMAD aussi. Alors, on a regardé un peu la structure de la base de données dans, dans Climsoft et on a identifié trois tables qui sont vraiment importantes pour euh, les opérations qu'on veut faire dans la station Climsa. Et il s'agit de la table où on a la description des stations, leur euh, identificatif, la position géographique, l'altitude, des autres éléments. Euh, et là, c'est la première table qui s'appelle « station ». Après, une seconde table qui donne la définition de paramètres, par exemple, la température journalière min et max, les précipitations journalières millimètres. Là, il y a aussi les, les unités de mesure, évidemment, et la, la, les facteurs de scaling factor. Je ne sais pas la traduction en français. Mais disons, la définition de tous les paramètres, on a vu trois de ces paramètres dans la démonstration de, de You, hein, le facteur d'échelle. Merci, Christophe. Et là, disons, c'est la seconde table. Et il y a une troisième table qui contient vraiment les observations. Ça veut dire la station où la, la mesure est prise, le paramètre qui est mesuré et la valeur. Euh, avec les temps, évidemment, quand on a fait la, la mesuration, la mesure. Euh, alors, euh, Yuriana vient d'expliquer qu'on on est capable pour le moment de faire euh, l'exportation de Climsoft, mais pas de ces trois tables dont on a besoin. Mais on a discuté avec l'un des développeurs de Climsoft qui, qui est associé pour le moment à ICPAC. Et dans la prochaine version de Climsoft, on aura l'option d'exporter, de, euh, disons, dans un format euh, CSV, un format textuel, et que ces trois tables pour faciliter et rendre un peu plus agile, euh, plus simple, euh, l'opération de transfert de Climsoft dans la Climsa Station. Une fois qu'on aura ces trois tables, on pourra, à travers ce Jupyter Notebook, qui est une partie de la Climsa Station, comme vous le savez, qu'on va vous distribuer, on pourra simplement, if you go to the top, Yuriana, on pourra simplement dire où sont les trois tables, les trois fichiers textuels. Là, vous voyez, pour les stations, pour les, les paramètres, qui s'appellent Obs Element, euh, éléments d'observation, et pour les observations fi finales, on donne simplement l'allocation euh, dans, la, dans le système de fichiers de ces trois fichiers qu'on vient de générer à partir de la station de, de, de l'outil Climsoft. À ce moment-là, on pourra exécuter les autres lignes de commande à travers le, le, le Jupyter Notebook. Euh, on fera peut-être une formation plus spécifique sur ça dans, dans le futur quand on va distribuer la, la nouvelle version. Et bah, simplement, le, le système là, il va à travers les trois tables et il va euh, télécharger dans la base de données de la Climsa Station euh, les, la position des stations, la, les éléments, les paramètres de mesure et les observations mesurées. Alors évidemment, la première fois, il faudra définir toutes les stations. Euh, parce que quand on donne la, la base de données, elle est vide. Et, euh, et 
tout l'historique des, des mesures qui, on, on sait dans certains cas, est très longue. Elle va dans le passé, même euh, aux années du, du siècle précédent. Et, et après, il s'agira de faire que la synchronisation des mesures les plus, les plus récentes. Je ne rentre pas trop dans le détail là, mais c'est pour dire simplement que la, la gestion de, des informations, des données dans la base de données pour euh, populer la station avec les données qui viennent de Climsoft est possible, assez simple, et il sera fait à travers euh, le Jupyter Notebook. Euh, pour le moment, on, on a l'interface, disons, la capacité de transférer les données de Climsoft vers la Climsa Station. On, on est en train de regarder Clyde, Clysis pour, pour ajouter ça. Euh, dans... Et vous pouvez même maintenant dire euh, quel est votre intérêt et même quel est l'outil que vous utilisez. So, for, for everyone who's in English, um, as uh, you have already mentioned, We now implemented this interface to, to export the, the table from uh, um, Climsoft to uh, do the import in the Climsa station. We are about to look at the different um, tools and uh, DBMS. So maybe can also, if you like, now intervene and say what, what, what you actually use. We know that in some cases, people are receiving also data directly from AWS. So as a simple uh, text file. And we are looking at also on how to do the import directly from these uh, text files. So that's about, this, um, say, the second part of uh, the presentation on the import. This is a bit more technical, maybe a bit advanced. We don't pretend now to 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 transfer the, the whole information was just a demonstration on uh, how it is going to be done once you receive a new version. So if there is any question or any remark on this part, uh, the floor is open for you. Uh, hi, good morning, good, good afternoon. Hello, go ahead. It's on. Hello, yes. Uh, Can we have a sample of those three files? Um, um, it's okay, yeah. Um, I think yes. We can um, share maybe just a few lines of each of them. We received the, the, the issue here is a bit always said on uh, the um, property of the data. Normally, um, we are not entitled to, to share um, those. Uh, information we receive from uh, the institutions, uh, your institutions, uh, and uh, we, we don't deploy them. But uh, if you are interested in looking at the format, we can maybe just take uh, five lines, 10 lines from each file, uh, so that is not really a lot of information and share with you. Yes, this is what I'm, tr what I'm trying to get, just the uh, structure of the file. Yeah, is that for um, uh, the Climsoft software or for other software? Why, why do you need the structure? Uh, we want to get our data to this do the same structure as those but, files and then we'll try to import. Yeah, but you using Climsoft? No, that's why we need those files to... Yeah to make yeah. it similar to those files. <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay. It, it, they will, the files that you uh, will need uh, to, to um, let's say, export from the system that you are using uh, are going to be different than the ones of uh, coming from the Climsoft software because the ones of the Climsoft software uh, actually uh, are um, uh, the three three just a dump of three tables the station table the ops element table and the observation final table um, but uh, we don't need all that information so the, the climate station actually uh, is uh, uses a copy of these three tables from the Klimsoft uh, data, database um, but for example for the station data there are just a few mandatory fields that you need to provide And that is uh, the station ID, uh, latitude and longitude, 
uh, and uh, yeah, preferably you can give also uh, uh, other um, information, but um, um, so uh, you don't need to provide all these fields, but um, at, at least um, the mandatory, uh, minimum the mandatory fields. So we will, um, we ha actually have um, uh, um, sort of a diagram of these tables where the the mandatory fields are indicated and uh, that is uh, that is uh, what you what you will need actually so that okay. uh, that we will provide that um, that will be then uh, uh, simply with um, um uh, header name the header so the column names and uh, and the data type that is what you need and then which which fields are mandatory yeah. but what system are you using okay can we just with the mandatory fields it will be helpful yeah may i ask what system you are using is it clyde or uh, clysis we also have uh, files uh, in a format C21, okay. CSV files, and we, we can we can try to get those data and import the yeah. clemency. Uh, I guess they get the data set directly from the AWS. Am I correct, Edson? Yeah. Yeah, Edson, I think we, you, we had discussion with you already about that. Uh, and so I explained that, that you receive uh, the files as um, text files from uh, the AWS. Then you go through a first application uh, just uh, for validation, and then you import them in classes, correct? Yes. Yeah. So in, um, in our previous discussions, because what we have done now from Cliffsoft is a way to import the data into the, um, the system into the climate station. Then for you, we discussed um, two different options. One is to see what can be done from crisis or before importing them in crisis. And there were pro and cons on both uh, approaches. From crisis uh, would be easier to get all the historical records. So maybe that, that's a pro but also you are not sure how long you will continue using classes. So also the option of importing from um, the, the, stage, the CSV you export. What's the name of the other tool, which is upstream uh, classes, uh, VT, I don't remember the name you mentioned that. Obsmet. Obsmet, exactly, still from uh, Metro France, yeah. Uh, so what, what the output of uh, Obsmet, we could, um, Treater. And through the Jupyter Notebooks, uh, we can have a lot of flexibility to import uh, from any format. Basically, from the station table, uh, we need to know the ID and the geographic position. From the OPS element, uh, uh, Jurian will share with you. Yeah, it's exactly in this table, so we can send it uh, to everyone at the end of this meeting. Uh, from the, the OPS element, does contain the definition of all parameters. Uh, so uh, indeed what the units are very important, a millimeter, Kelvin, Celsius, and so on. The scale, scaling factor, cause uh, we have to convert from the, say, the number to the physical unit. Then uh, the element type, um, I think is the frequency. So how frequent is the measurement daily uh, 10 day hourly and so on. And then um, the observations, uh, uh, and that's already not done in the format you have, I think, uh, they have to, to refer to the station, obviously. So an observation is taken over a station for a, a given element. So you have uh, some um, acronym in your uh, tables to, to identify each of them and uh, then the time and the values. So uh, I'm not sure you sent us already the output of uh, OPSMET, some uh, sample output. So we can also work directly on these files to do the ingestion. Eh? 
without on you to having to convert it to a different format. We we do have something from them. Huh? Okay. One, one mm -hmm. And and by the way, uh, the the table in the middle is is the table where uh I will put the values from the stations. Let's say I have like three stations, and if I just put the 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 values like temperature, pressure, humidity, and so on, like in the field, OBS value. I'll... Yeah, we like... to to write a, a small script to go through each line, look at the station, check if it's already in the DB. Otherwise, uh, we will require to to be defined the new station. Then uh, for each uh, of the uh, three parameters you measure where to identify uh, the corresponding uh, observation element in our DB and also take the value, do a um, conversion of a scaling factor if needed and then upload. But I think we can go back to that uh, by looking at what you sent uh, and then be um, asking for a specific meeting with you so as we have done a Jupyter notebook for the output of CleanSoft, we can also do a notebook for your case, I mean, your situation. Indeed, what we need, and maybe you can anticipate it, is a definition of all the stations. So in a table, you need to put the ID, geographic position of all the stations, because that has to be populated as a first action. So we need the definition of the stations. They are ID, maybe the region, the province, the altitude. These are not really are optional, are not really mandatory. But indeed, the geolocation, lat and Londa, and the ID of the station, these are strictly very necessary. So I'd so maybe, I don't know, you provided uh, you here or Heidi with this uh, table which is the, the definition of all the stations. Yeah, indeed. Okay, yeah, thanks. Not yet. Um, I have only an example. Um, let's say the, the observations, but um, uh -huh. information about uh, the elements. Uh, well, actually, we also have the information about the elements. Um, so we have to map them to the element present in the climate, uh, in the climate station, uh, but we miss uh, state station information. Yeah, so indeed we need to uh, add some of the, um, the definition of all the stations. So basically where they are, their ID, maybe a symbolic name you want to, to see displayed, and uh, the, the position. So the ID that is used in the in your observations um, file. Okay, yes. that's, we can update uh, their system and then work with them to uh, help yeah. help them separately. So also, if anybody else has uh, the different different request, I guess we can work with them separately. Okay. Okay. Uh, just like for. For test, I will send three stations. Okay, that, okay. I think it's fine. And then if everything goes well, and then we can give more. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay. Okay. Um, can you allow me sharing, uh, Christoph? Uh, you have uh, to ask Yurian to stop sharing. You authorize, huh? Okay, Yurian. So if you can close your sharing, I can go. Because I think, uh, as and this is your uh, format. So um, I don't know what we have already because uh, um, I was not involved, but uh, okay, this is actually the station. So for each of uh, the different stations uh, here, we need uh, basically um, a descriptive field. I don't know if you have a name 
with uh, way it is. Uh, but uh, that, that's not mandatory. What is mandatory is for each of them, the Latlon, the exact location to display them on the map. So uh, this is one thing. And then for each of these parameter, we need uh, the, the full definition, uh, the unit, uh, the frequency. They are meant to be measured, so every day, every hour, uh, and so on. Then uh, if there is any scaling factor. So um, maybe you already provided that, but uh, for each of them, uh, exactly what, what it is. So uh, what, what type of measurement and uh, um, what, what I just mentioned. You can, can send also this, uh, this slide with the mandatory elements. So, so that we can populate uh, the station table, uh, the, what we call observational elements, so the definition of the parameters, uh, and then we can process uh, th those files uh, and uh, inserting, upserting into the DB the real measurements by checking that uh, the station is defined, uh, the parameter is defined, and so on. But then uh, say that um, the station table is more or less static, and unless you, you add new station. The definition of a parameter, we see it as also as a static, not, not something that changes every day. While indeed uh, the measurements uh, you will upload uh, every day, every week, um, much more frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do it and I will send it to you. Thank you very much. Is there any question, comments about uh, this? Uh, il y a une question sur le chat en français. Quels sont les pays qui bénéficieront? Les stations Climsa. Alors, il n'y a pas de, il a pas dans le projet Climsa, il n'y a pas d'installation de stations à proprement parler. Donc, on ne va pas installer des stations. Euh, là, ce qu'on propose, c'est que dans la Climsa Station, on... c'est une fonctionnalité pour intégrer des, sta... des données stations qui sont déjà collectées. On ne parle pas d'installation de nouvelles stations ou bien de. Euh... Avouez pas la question. Euh, donc je finis, je, pardon, je finis la réponse en français et je, après je fais en anglais. Donc il n'y a pas d'installation de nouvelles stations dans le programme Climsa. Ce sont des stations qui sont euh, déjà existantes, qui, sont, qui ont la possibilité d'être intégrées dans la station, dans le, le Climsa Station. So there was a question in the chat, but for a private message, I think asking if um, what are the countries that will get, receive some stations. So the idea is not, I mean, the, to clarify, it's not um, in the Klimsa program, we don't install new uh, weather station, but it's just a functionality, a, a technology uh, to include the, st the, observa the, the observations, the, the weather stations into the Klimsa station. So it's completely not related to the installation of, um, of new observations. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions? Do you have any additional questions? If not, and if there is no feedbacks from, is if there is also a time where I mean, if yeah, okay, Narcisse, go ahead. Oui, merci Christophe. Au fait, euh, j'ai pris la réunion au, au vol. Mais c'est un sujet d'intérêt vraiment pour nous, au, pour notre région, en Afrique de l'Ouest. Et d'ailleurs, le chef de département, M. Henri Songoti, a dit si on peut avoir l'enrichissement le, de la réunion, on pourrait voir comment est-ce que euh, on va suivre les étapes pour pouvoir atteindre le, euh, comment on appelle, accomplir avec ce que nous avons à, au niveau de l'ordre base de données, comment les spatialiser au niveau de la Clim Station. Donc, l'attente est vraiment grande ici. Et je pense que vous, vous serez le support technique afin que vraiment, au niveau opérationnel, 
qu'on soit vraiment à la hauteur des attentes des pays. Voilà ce que j'ai. Merci Narcisse. Évidemment, l'enregistrement le, de, la, de, la, de, la, de cette session sera sur la chaîne, la chaîne YouTube. J'enverrai un message pour prévenir tout le monde. Euh, et donc, vous aurez la possibilité, évidemment, d'avoir tous les détails, y compris euh, du début de la réunion. Et euh, on vous tient au courant, évidemment, euh, des améliorations ou des développements, des futurs euh, développements qui sont liés à ces observations et l'intégration de ces stations dans euh, de ces stations météorologiques dans la, la CLIMSA. Et euh, si vous avez des questions, des remarques, etc., n'hésitez pas aussi à nous contacter. So there, there was just a comment about the access of the data of the video uh, because uh, agreement was wasn't at the beginning of the of the session. So we will put the video in our YouTube channel. I will send the link once uploaded. And do not hesitate. I mean, we will we will keep we we will keep in touch with everyone uh, to to announce news about uh, um, the development of future. Um, um, tools or future functionalities into the Klimsa station or regarding the weather stations. And of course, uh, we keep it, we, we are keep in touch. And if you need any uh, comment, if you need any help for the installation of this observation, don't hesitate to contact us. There's a direct question again from Comoros. Uh, is, uh, are the Puma stations Can be, in, in, can be integrated into the Klimsa station. Marco, uh, est-ce que les, les, les stations Puma existantes peuvent être intégrées? In English or in French? The question is in France, in French, but uh, you can answer in both. Or, I mean, I think it's, it's uh, on the interest of everyone. So okay, yes. Can... Non, OK. Bah, disons que euh, dans les projets précédents, à partir du projet MESA, on, on a fait la livraison de, de stations Puma et de stations MESA qui contenaient la euh, vieille version de l'e-station. Et maintenant, dans la Klimsa Station, il y a ce qu'il y avait dans la e-station et beaucoup plus. Par exemple, cette fonctionnalité n'était pas là du tout. Et disons que les fonctionnalités des deux stations sont assez différentes. Je veux dire, les deux, comme vous savez, probablement étaient branchés à Umedcast, mais euh, la, la Puma Station est dédiée plutôt à l'observation de produits météo sur une très courte échelle temporelle, tandis que la e Station a été toujours proposée pour une analyse environnementale, pour l'agriculture, pour euh, les, les ressources hydriques, l'état de la végétation, les feux, même pour des applications marines mais sur une échelle tout à fait différente. Euh, disons que moi, je ne vois pas trop, mais là, je suis ouvert à des suggestions <rire> et à des idées, des nouvelles idées, pour euh, que, quels seraient les bénéfices, euh, l'avantage d'avoir cette liaison. Considérez aussi que dans Klimsa, on est en train, vraiment dans ces semaines-là, de signer un contrat euh, pour avoir la nouvelle Puma 2023, on l'appelle, qui va euh, permettre la visualisation des données du nouveau satellite MTG et de la Klimsa Station, qui est, comme on disait, beaucoup plus riche que la vieille station de Mesa. Mais encore là, elles seront sur, euh, avec des applications de traitement et de visualisation différentes et connectées entre eux, mais pour deux euh, formes d'utilisation différentes. Mais si vous avez un intérêt particulier à cette liaison, je vous en prie de, de l'exprimer pour nous, nous connaître, faire connaître. OK. So, very quickly in English, uh, what about the connection between Puma and Klimsa Station? So, in the past, uh, since 2016, uh, we deployed... Uh, in the MESA program, the Puma, old Puma named Puma 2015 uh, to all NHMS in Africa and uh, uh, the base station 200 within the MESA station. They were deployed uh, to different institutions uh, and uh, with different goals. The um, Puma station uh, for now casting mainly, so really visualization of uh, really short term uh, products. Uh, from uh, UMETSAT mainly, 
and way station for more environmental monitoring in different fields. Uh, so looking at vegetation condition, precipitations, fires, and also marine um, variables. Um, there is no really, it's possible to, to link the, the two systems. Some of the data used by both systems are in common. Um, yeah, uh, if we better understand what, what would be the need and the, um, the benefit of having this, uh, this link. Now in CLIMSA, we, um, African Union Commission is about to sign a contract, a supply contract for the deployment of uh, the new Puma 2023 station, which is able to, to deal with the MTG, the third generation of Metasat satellite data sets, and this Klimsa station we are proposing. So all uh, national meteorological and hydrological services in Africa will receive this new station starting uh, next year. Uh, we think after summer 2024. So that's just also to, to update you on this um, parallel activity. And the, the two systems are going to be deployed in this case to the same institutions, which was not the case in the past, um, connected somehow in the same LAN. So, but again, with two different uh, uh, expected type of usage. So um, that's a bit my, I hope it does answer the question. Okay. Et si je peux revenir à l'intervention de Narcisse, simplement pour dire que tu verras, salut Narcisse, tu verras dans la vidéo qu'on a traité, euh, on fait une petite démonstration de ce qu'on peut faire, comme faire la visualisation des données de station maintenant dans la page d'analyse de la Climsa Station, et après la seconde partie sur euh, comme télécharger dans la Climsa Station les données qui viennent de Climsoft que peut-être vous utilisez aussi. Euh, je je t'invite à, à regarder la vidéo en cas de suggestion de n'importe quel type de retour, même requête de clarification, tu peux revenir vers nous. OK, Christophe, back to you. OK. I think it's... Uh, is there any comments, last question? Open, completely open to something else regarding the Klimsa station. If you have any comments or requests regarding the Klimsa station, the new development, the future uh, UEF. So if you need a specific help in using the, 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 the CS uh, for any, if there is no request, we're gonna stop the meeting now. Anything? Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. I will stop recording.